Hello again, and uh, I would like to welcome Talia. Talia is an international speaker that delivers uh, content on everything regarding testing and quality. She is a developer advocate at Split. If I don't get it wrong, please correct me. You are in um, uh, Carolina, could be? Talia? Where are oh, you located? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, wow, cool. That's amazing. We have people from all over the world. Yeah. That's really cool. She's really passionate about feature flagging, canary launches, uh, CI, CD, and testing in production. Well, um, yep, and A-B testing. So uh, Talia, she's uh, going to deliver a talk regarding feature flags in React with you, Talia Nasi, setting up feature flags with React. The stage is yours. Great. OK. So I'm Talia, and I'm going to talk about setting up feature flags with React. Um, and basically, what I want to do is um, go through like a real world example. So let's say I'm a front end developer, and I'm working on this to do list app. So right now, users only have the ability to add a task to the list. And I want to add the ability to delete. So adding this new delete feature requires some backend work because I need a new API endpoint. And I don't know if the backend change is going to be ready in time or at the same time as like my front end change. But here is what I've done so far. I have this conditional statement set. And then by default, the user is not allowed to delete. So this is the current state. So if I'm saying if allow delete, then I'm going to render with delete. And if not, then render without delete. And right now, it's just hard coded as false. And then when I'm testing this locally, I flip this Boolean to true, and I test stuff out. And then once the back end is ready, and I want my users to be able to see the delete button, then I just push this commit with the Boolean equal to true, right? So what's great about this is that if there's bugs with the backend API, then it's relatively easy for me to temporarily roll back this release. So what I've created here is just a basic example of a feature flag. And a feature flag is a piece of code that lets you separate um, code deployment from feature release. And this has a lot of different use cases. So we just saw one example of how you'd want to use this if like, different parts of a feature are not ready. Um, you can also use feature flags to test your code in production to ensure proper functionality. Um, you can use them to perform A-B testing to figure out like which version of a feature gives you a higher conversion rate. You can use them as a kill switch, which allows you to turn off a feature in case something goes wrong and you need to hide it. Um, you can use feature flagging for subscription management to manage permissions. Um, you can use them to implement a canary release or a percentage rollout where um, your feature is only made available to a small subset of users. And then you can identify issues before you make it available to the entire user base. And then you can also use it to migrate your monolith to microservices. Um, and there's there's so much more, but we don't have time to go through everything. But I just kind of want you to get a good a good feel for like what a feature flag is. Um, and ultimately, like why we care about these is because feature flags improve your ability to develop, test and deliver new features while minimizing risk throughout the process. And it really just provides a really good foundation for continuous delivery. And it also increases the impact of your changes. So Feature flags allow you to directly correlate the impact of your changes by pushing information about your flags to your internal analytics system. So your business decisions and everything that like your company decides to do should be based off of data and using a smart feature flagging system is going to give you that data that you need to make those decisions. So by using a feature, a feature flag management system like split, you are able to set who can see which features without ever committing new code. And this is really great for product owners and like people who don't code necessarily because they can control user experience without having to ask the developers to commit new code. 
Um, this also is what it looks like in Split, but like there's other feature flag management tools. There's like LaunchDarkly and um, CloudBees and Optimizely. There's a ton of them out there. Um, but again, what I want to do is I want to roll out this delete functionality in a controlled way using feature flags. Now, this basic thing that I had previously, like that if else statement, like it was fine and it worked, but if I use a feature flag system, I get more control and I can turn things on and off without having to touch source code. And I can also target specific users or specific types of users. And in split, these possible states of what your user can see are called treatments. So here I'm saying I want myself and developers to be able to see this new functionality. So everyone else who's not myself or a developer is not going to see this functionality. Um, and you can see on the bottom, the default rule is off. So again, for this demo app, the treatment controls who can delete tasks. So when the treatment is on, the user will be able to delete tasks. And when the treatment is off, the user will not be able to delete tasks. And this is what it would look like in each case. Um, so again, what I had before, it's a super hacky way to do this because I'm hard coding whether or not the user can delete. Um, and this is actually the right way to do it in React where depending on the value of the prop, you're either going to show the delete button or not show it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create a feature flag, install all the dependencies, configure the React app, and then instantiate and use the SDK. So the first step is to create the feature flag. Um, it's pretty simple in the split UI. So after you log in, you see a button that says create your split, which is just another word for feature flag. And then once you click on that, you can add some details about the flag. So you want to select a name that's kind of like descriptive of what the flag is doing. And this is going to appear in your code later. And then select your traffic type. So traffic type differentiates the people who see your feature and the people who don't see your feature. So this can be user, location, device, if like you only want Android users to see this feature and then like later you'll release it to iOS because it's like not ready for iOS yet or um, if this is something specific for Europe and you only want people in Europe to see the feature because it's not applicable to the rest of the world. So you can decide like what the traffic type you want to be is um, and then you can set up your targeting rules. And so again, in my example, I'm saying I want myself and developers to be able to delete and everyone else is going to get the default existing behavior of only being able to add tasks. And so now I'm going to install, there's only one dependency and it's this thing from split. Um, and I'll go through exactly what gets imported. Um, so again, you just create your React app with create React app and then install this one dependency in your root folder. And then you instantiate and use the SDK. So the first thing you need to do when you're using the SDK is import the JavaScript SDK. Um, and then at the top of your component, you want to import split treatments and with split factory from split. Um, so split treatments is a React component that performs feature evaluation. And um, we're going to use this in our render function. And then the with split factory higher order component is used to wrap the to-do list component when I export it. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. So I split up my render function in two. So in the first one, I return the treatment and configuration from split treatments. And then in the names prop, I pass in the name of my feature flag that I created from the UI. So note that this must exactly match the name that you inputted while creating your split. So um, I named mine Talia to-do list delete in the UI. So in the code, I'm also going to um, put that name here. And then in the second render function, I created a variable named allow delete that differentiates between treatment on and off. So if the treatment's on, you're allowing the user to delete tasks. And if the treatment is off, then there is no option to delete. And then I have a function called create tasks that gets called in my render function and that conditionally renders the delete button if the allow delete variable is set to true. So this is kind of what it, what it looks like in, um, in play. So after the render functions, I have my configuration and this is what I use to configure my instance of split. So what this does is it initializes with split factory 
which is the entry point of the library. So basically each user has their own authentication key and I can find mine in the UI. And then the key parameter is telling Split who the current user is. So in this case, like when I run NPM start, I'm gonna see the delete button because I'm saying, pretend this is Talia Nasi and um, enter the app as if I was looking at it. And then when I set debug to true, I see all the logs from Split in the browser console. So here I want you to pay attention to two things. The first is that on the bottom, you can clearly see that I'm the person who's getting the treatment. And the, the second is that you can see that the treatment is set to on for me. And then now watch what happens when you change the key to a test user who's not in the split. So the delete buttons disappear. And this is because the user is not targeted. So remember that only developers and myself were able to see the feature. So notice in the console logs, I clearly see the treatment is off and I'm now getting um, the default or existing behavior because I'm logged in as someone who is not targeted. All right, so I just wanna include some useful links. So I have a video on feature flag maintenance that goes into like a lot of depth of um, like best practices and like how to maintain feature flags in a big code base. Um, if you want to start with feature flags, you can go ahead and sign up at split.io. You can do it for free. Um, and then if you want to link to the repo that all this code is in, this is my um, GitHub uh, account. And then um, again, I'm Talia. Here's my Twitter, my email. Um, I'm happy to answer questions if you email me or tweet me and thank you for having me.